Well, we're heading down to Steve's, mm -hmm. which we do periodically. Oh, every Sunday. Because it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's just fun to go down to Steve's because he has uh, I no hyperbole here, the world's <laughs> coolest railroad. Yes, he does. Anyway, he's uh, painting the backdrop for the new village, the village of nowhere, <laughs> which is that village at the end of the bridge to nowhere. If you remember the episode on the bridge to nowhere, link is up right now and you can go look at that. But uh, he's almost done with the village of nowhere and we will be doing a show on the village of nowhere when it's completely finished. But this is kind of like a preview of that because it's probably 90% or 95% <laughs> finished. But he's painting the backdrop today for the village of nowhere. And what he's doing is he's cheating. He's got a 30 year old backdrop from a previous railroad and he's <laughs> going to repurpose that. Oh but since we're on this backdrop thing with Robbie right. and Gil and all of this kind of stuff, we thought we'd show you how Steve paints a backdrop, or in this particular case, how Steve repaints a backdrop. <laughs> so check this out, it's really cool. So here we have the Bridge to Nowhere. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Fun episode. And here is Nowhere, the village of nowhere. <laughs> and that's why I called it Nowhere originally, and Steve yeah. just took the name and he ran with it. it. But initially there was really nothing there. This is the new boathouse that's on Lake Inferior. Oh, wow. And look how Steve has done the weathering here. Oh my goodness. Where the, the boathouse is sitting in the lake or just above the lake and the water has decayed and rotted the wood away here. That looks so good. And of course, because it's on Steve's railroad, there's a mine. Yes, of course. And because there's a mine, it has an 18-inch gauge railroad that uh -huh. runs the mine. So Back that's in going in up here. Now, because the village of Nowhere is on Lake Inferior, the 30-inch gauge railroad runs along this pier. Wow, look at that. Isn't that neat, the way Steve has done that? And all the little buildings are removable. That way Steve can work on the wiring and the interiors and so on at the bench and then put them back up onto the village after he's worked on them. Now this is the uh, first iteration of the Lake Inferior Inn. Uh, started off very basic, of course. It's all finished now. Well, the wiring. The wiring. The wiring <laughs> is still going in. Other than that, I think it's all done. The whole railroad is so amazing. But one of the things that's really cool are Steve's backdrops. No kidding. He's kind of what you would call a classically trained artist. Of course, yes. And, uh, well, he just muddles around with this <laughs> and, and has a good deal of fun painting all these backdrops behind the scenes. And they just look so cool. Now, this is a railroad that Steve and some other guys built like 30 years ago. Oh, my. I recognize it, but I don't. Yeah, you, you haven't seen it. It hasn't been set up for a long time, no. and yet it's so photographed. And bits and pieces of it are floating around. Yes, they are. <laughs> and uh, one of those bits and pieces has been out in Steve's garage, and that's one of the backdrops. That's this backdrop here that covered the center section of the modular railroad. And it's got these buildings on it, and it's very New England. This was a, a two-foot gauge O-scale railroad. What I'm doing is this was an existing backdrop, and I added about 15 inches to this side. There was a black area over there that another building went on top of. This was an old mod an old backdrop for an old module from 25 30 years ago and so i'm recycling the backdrop i'm going to keep most of the buildings and stuff but i've painted out some of this area over here and restructuring it into some little more jagged mountains i'm not quite sure whether i'll go in and do something on these mountains or not i think i will but I want to keep the buildings, and I like the red in the trees. I'm going to put some more trees in here, but I don't think I'll put any more buildings in here. Uh, when I set it up in place, I'll get a little better idea of where I'm at.
So Steve kept putting the backdrop sort of temporarily in place just so he could see how things would line up and figure out what he wanted to paint and where he wanted to paint it. It's coming right together here. I'll say. You can see how the buildings line up with buildings and mountains fill in and some of the open areas and that sort of thing. Just amazing. This whole village is about eight feet up in the air. It is. <laughs> so you've got to climb on a ladder to get up here and see it. But that just makes it so cool that it's up there in the rafters that way with this long bridge going to it. Yes. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, no. it's, it's the essence of Steve's Railroad. I told him that his railroad is like a guy who's built a ship in a bottle, only he's in the bottle with the ship. Yes. And that's really a good <laughs> that's, description that's a good of Steve's analogy. railroad. You kind of <laughs> go up ladders and crawl around in there, and everything is just railroad everywhere you go. Right. But uh, you kind of uh, fit yourself in there and crawl around, and you can see the railroad. Underpainting is what I've done here. You're getting the basic shapes in, you're starting to get shadows and highlights. Uh, you're developing some very simple forms to give you a little bit of a road map to start to follow. Then as you go in, you start to refine it. And on your backdrop, Robbie was doing the same thing. He got an underpainting going and then he started to refine it and that's the way we work because you feel your way into it. So Robbie told us that he paints dark to light. He puts the dark areas in first right. and then details in lighter colors and Steve does the same thing but first the dark colors go over the underpainting and then the details are added in lighter colors mm -hmm. over the top of that. And this is kind of a classical technique that right. a lot of artists use. Not everyone, there are no rules, of course. I mostly paint dark to light too. In like pastels and oils and acrylics, you usually go dark to light. In watercolors, it's just the opposite. But we very rarely use watercolors for a backdrop. So in this case, Steve is uh, cheating on that because he's, well, he's working on top of an existing painting. Right. And so a lot of the rules have to be thrown away because you can't, he's not starting from scratch. He's, no. he's making changes and fixing things up. But generally speaking, he's still following those general rules. He's putting in these dark colors here. It's just that a lot of the painting's already done. Right and so uh, he's just working in the areas that he wants to change. So this is a cool technique that Steve showed us called velatura, and I'm anxious to try it. You mix a, a clear coat with a little bit of white and a little bit of blue and then you paint it over the distant mountains to make them more distant. You start off with something like this. This is matte medium mm -hmm. that you mix up and it's just kind of a clear gloss stuff but you can mix your water-based acrylics with it and he puts just like a drop or two of white and a drop or two of his sky blue in there and then paints it over the mountain over and over and over again until the mountain tends to disappear back into the background and feel like a much more distant mountain. Nice. And is that cool or what? So here's an effect. Here's the original and then the lighter version. And doesn't that look like the mountain is further away now? Sure does. It, that's a great idea. Uh, so Steve is just here putting clear coat after clear coat after clear coat on there. He lets each one dry. They dry very rapidly. And if he wants it to be lighter, he adds another coat. I'm really, really anxious to give this a try. No kidding. I, I painted that one backdrop a while back and everything's just right in your face. And I, I want some of those mountains to feel distant. So yeah. this should work for that. Mm -hmm. Steve said it's also called aerial perspective. Oh. Now there's a book of rules. <laughs> uh, <laughs> on, on, painting, on painting backdrops, Steve breaks every one of those rules. One of those rules is don't paint buildings on the backdrop. Oh. Because they'll just never look right and it'll just never work. 
But one of the things Steve has done here is most of his buildings sit at about a 45 degree angle and that really, really helps them blend in with the mm -hmm. existing buildings. It does. Of course, the fact that he can paint a building that looks uh, very realistic. Yeah, the shadowing <laughs> ride. And <laughs> yeah, that, that helps oh, too. Yes. But uh, no, he's been doing this for years, adding in buildings in the mm -hmm. backdrop, and a lot of people just shy away from it. I noticed that Robbie does the same thing. He mm -hmm. paints buildings in there. Right. I want the village of nowhere to look like it's bigger than it actually is. And I'm hoping that this will convey that idea. Preliminary, when I had it up there several weeks ago, it looked like it was going to work. So that's why I want to keep these buildings and see what we can do with them. In my opinion, I think these buildings, because they're obscured quite a bit with trees, so basically most of them are just roof lines, I think I can get away with it, but maybe not. Uh, because this was an originally a backdrop for a New England two-foot gauge module. Maybe it has too much of a New England look, but I'm not sure. It's probably got way too many churches. <laughs> Now here, here's another trick that both Steve and Robbie, it's a rule that they break. Yeah. And that's don't put roads on the backdrop that go into the backdrop. Yes. If you look at fine art, 90% of the fine art that incorporates a pathway or a road or something, it's going to have that S shape or a Z shape. It's not going to be just a straight head on line in because it's very hard to make that look as good. Uh, it's more pleasing to the eye to have the curvature, the up and down, it just works better. And we need to, as model railroaders, you know, follow some of those ideas. Now, while both of these guys are really, really good at what they do, they will both tell you that the way you learn this is by screwing around. Exactly. You just do it. Uh, nobody is born knowing how to paint like this. And the more you do it, the better you get. Exactly. And following some of these general guidelines and rules and breaking some of these general right. guidelines and rules. But the key is you just do it. You just screw around and mess around and make it work. And after, you know, 50 years of screwing around and messing around, Steve has gotten quite good at it. Yes, he has. But that's just because he's done it a lot. Now, right here, he's adding in some really tall trees because he's going to put uh, three or four of uh, Al's big, tall pine trees in this area. And that will make the pine trees be continued on into the backdrop. Right. But uh, our friend Al makes those just really, really impressive pine trees. We've got the video on that up. And uh, so there's going to be a stand of maybe three of those, maybe five of those. Uh, typically trees go in in odd numbers for some reason. So just as the buildings form an extension to the modeled buildings, the painted trees will help extend the forest into the backdrop. Well, the village sure looks impressive. Yeah, it does. I, I've seen it morph into something completely different than what I saw the first time. Well, it was really hard to envision what in the world Steve had in mind exactly. for this thing up in the rafters. Right. And now that we see it, it's like, wow. Wow, and it's grown overnight. It's grown, and it's yeah. almost done. He's got some of these buildings removed right here, and he's working on the lights. But as soon as the lighting works in these, then they go back up on there. When you're up in the village, you're way up in the air here, Notice we're looking down on Upper Pandora, which is about six feet off the floor. <laughs> and, and Pandora's way down below you down there. And then Lower Pandora is about four feet below that. <laughs> so it's all these fun layers going yes. down. Not to the mention railroad. the underground city. <laughs> and then the underground city. Inside. So there's, there's a lot going on yes. here. But what a it. fun, fun railroad. And the Village of Nowhere is a wonderful new addition to this incredible railroad. Wow. It's just, it's turning out so cool. I, it might be the coolest place on the whole exactly. railroad. Exactly. Uh, hard to say. Everything he does seems to turn out cooler than the thing he did just yeah. a little while yes. ago. And the village is almost done now. Yes. And Steve is threatening to move back to the port area. <laughs> 
and uh, build the lighthouse that he's been talking oh. about for about 10 years. Yes, you better name it after me. There you go. Well, <laughs> lighthouses are your thing. Yeah, they are. So uh, that'll just be impressive to see what he does for a lighthouse. So that's how Steve uh, paints a backdrop, wow. or in this wow. particular case, repaints a backdrop. Repurposes, repaints. Repurposes, repaints, remodels. Remodels. Remodels, as the case oh, may be. When I do that, it always comes out of remodeling, yeah, not a remodeling. Up in the <laughs> Good grief. Uh. But he paints in a very similar technique to Robbie, and yet also totally mm -hmm. different. Yeah. But we've, we've gleaned great inspiration from both techniques and great inspiration just from the village of nowhere. Right. All that remains at this point is hooking up the electrical lights mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe two or three hundred other little things. <laughs> just those little details that need to be added in and then he's going to move on to something other than the village of nowhere. He's threatening to get back to the lighthouse mm -hmm. down at the port, which he sort of abandoned <laughs> uh, a couple bad. years ago. And now he's all excited about doing a lighthouse. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be that'll be upcoming but that's uh, that's steve painting a backdrop so that was a lot of fun if you haven't been over to the channel do pop on over yeah. to the channel and while you're heading over to the channel you want to subscribe because all toy man television subscribers are cool <laughs> this we know because yeah. we're, we're familiar with all twelve thousand of them oh yes so uh, at any rate, do subscribe and that will make you cool. And also when you see one of these things that you really like, share it with your mm -hmm. model railroad club, share it with your Facebook friends, share it with your parents, uh, share it with anybody. Fellow artists. Fellow artists, whatever. It's just always fun to get stuff out there. The, the, the more it gets out there, the happier we are. See the grin? <laughs> And of course, a thumbs up is right. always nice. But yes. the big thing is to remember to subscribe. Yes. And you can do that by clicking on the blue button, provided your device supports the blue <laughs> button. About half of them don't anymore. It's just the nature of the world. But mm. zoink! You see over here this blue button? It's not my Ford button. But it's, it's not her Ford button. <laughs> and don't confuse it with the, the, the no. rocket logo here. It's a blue button. It says subscribe, very small. Click on that, takes you to the channel makes you a subscriber and therefore makes you cool well we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet we hope you didn't find it boring and we will see you here again in a little while mm -hmm. with some more fun and frivolity exactly. see you then bye bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs>